if you could just enter a root canal system and know that for sure you will have no blockage during the procedure, um, how would that experience be different for you? Most of us uh, doing just what we were taught in dental school had this frustrating experience of taking small files to link, getting them to loosen the canal, putting just the next file size in there and having it hang up short and we put the 10 and the 8 and the 6 in there and we find out we're blocked and it was just the biggest mystery to me for at least four years of practice. So let me give you some of the insights I've had about this and if you can follow if you can discipline yourself to do the things I'm requesting of you, um, you could literally do another 10,000 cases and not have one canal blocked. Um, one of the most important things is to understand the etiology of blockage. <coughs> For decades, we thought it was uh, dentin debris. <coughs> and you can block out with dentin debris, but usually not irreversible depending on the curvature of the canal. Um, what, what I found to be confusing was that, uh, how could I get blocked out after just putting a couple of little tiny negotiating files in a root canal that uh, almost certainly didn't create any significant dental debris? And the breakthrough for me was getting blocked out in two canals of an upper four canal molar, um, realizing this never happens to me in necrotic cases. This is a vital case. And so I came to believe that the etiology is, in fact, vital tissue. What's my supporting evidence? It only happens irreversibly in vital cases. What's the difference between a vital and a non-vital case? It's a pulp. What is a pulp? A pulp is just connective tissue. It's nothing special. It's got some neural tissue in there. It's got mostly collagen fibers. It's got some blood, uh, some vascular tissue, but primarily connective tissue. Okay? Collagen. Okay. Look back in uh, 1800s and uh, 1900s and you'll see that in 1700s, 1600s, you'll see that uh, the furniture makers of those times not having the complicated polymers we have today used hide glue. Hide glue is made by rendering a dead animal down, collecting all their connective tissue products, the collagen, and it's uh, basically collagen tissue that we heat up and put in the joints to, to glue furniture pieces together. That's why this is so irreversible. And let's look at the etiology for how it actually happens. Okay, so the story I was given was we want to have hypochlorite in the root canal system. Uh, there are probably a few things in endo that you know, are more universally agreed on that hypochlorite is the irrigant of choice for negotiation and then that uh, you start with a 10K file and go to a 15K file. Or if you're really conservative and, and meticulous, you're gonna start with an 08 file and go to a 15 file at length and beyond. Um, my experience was everything was good until I got to this last file. When I take the, let's look at a blown up view of what's going on here. Let's take a look at the blow up view here. Here's the canal itself. I don't care about the rest of the root. Um, when we put an 08K file to and through the end of the root canal, it's about this big. So we work our way through. When we get a file, an 08 and a 10 file to length, very rarely is it binding, even close to binding at the terminus. Um, it's binding mostly back at the coronal extent where it's opening up the calcified uh, parts of the root canal system. Um, so we're making a hole through this little tissue stump that looks like this. Okay, And then we put the 10K file in there. It may make a hole somewhere else. And we can cut a tissue, a little hole in the tissue over here. But when we put the 15 file in, this file is very different. Here's the 10. And the 15 is the first file that approximates the apical diameter of the canal in this portion. Because it is approximate the apical diameter of these small canals, instead of the 8 and the 10,
being these act like swords or spears. because they're small enough to cut through the tissue, to penetrate it. The 15 file, this guy acts like a piston. Now all this is done in the presence of sodium hypochlorite. If you cut a hole through the tissue with the eight and another hole through the tissue with a 10 in the presence of an aqueous irrigant, these tissue segments can glue back together again. If I push this 15 file in this tissue wad ahead of it, it will end up as a solid mass of collagen here. If you have an apical curvature, unlikely you're ever going to get back through it again. How do we prevent this? And this is so ubiquitous, it happens to everybody all the time. If you block yourself out with vital tissue and it's not infected, it doesn't degrade later on, you can have an ex exceptional result. It's a very biologic interface. There's not bacteria living in there, but that's not a predictable thing. Also, you, it's not going to work if this tissue is still vital and inflamed. So it's got to be decompressed uh, so hard that it's devitalized. The things that you can do to prevent this from happening the rest of your career in endo, lose the hypochlorite. Okay, no hypochlorite. It will not help you prevent that tissue being wadded together. Uh, screws up apex locator readings. They're degraded. Okay, it won't prevent, it allows blockage. And by the way, the apex locator, almost unusable. Okay, because you can have a conductive uh, an apex locator that works with conductive fluids, but not touching metallic restorations in the coronal part of the root canal system. So then you have to take it out of the pulp chamber, and that's really going to set you up for a dry canal and easier blockage. But mostly it allows blockage. So what is our workaround? We're going to use a lubricant as irrigating as a solution in the tooth during negotiation. doesn't matter which one you use. I use uh, uh, ProLube because it has a little single dose dispenser. I tear the tip off and use it. The, the reason I love it is because of the dispenser not having any cross contamination. You can use RC Prep. You can use Glyoxide. You, if the, the pulp is bleeding, you don't need a lubricant because blood is very slippery. That will keep you from blocking out. The third thing that's critical here is uh, initial file to length. In small roots, small canals, those would be mandibular anteriors. Uh, I'm sorry, mandibular incisors, lower cuspids are big. Mandibular incisors, multi-canal premolars, and uh, the small molar roots, buccal roots, upper molars, and the mesial roots of lower molars. Okay, you need to start these with an 08K file. A 10 will block you out on occasion. Not always, but it will. This is your first file for small canals. Okay? For your medium and large canals, not usually blocked out. You're going to start that with a number 10 K file. And you're going to do just fine. <clears throat> the last thing that I need to address in terms of avoiding blockage is patency. Okay, let's look at that big, huge canal again. Here we go. <clears throat> Let's look right here. What does this look like? This looks like this.
and the files are <coughs> full size. If we have a taper in here, this canal may be a little bit bigger. But what the issue is, is can we clean debris in this last half millimeter or millimeter? Can we clean that out and never go past the end of the root canal? I would uh, suggest to you that that is literally impossible. You cannot do that. So unless you're willing to take a file at least one millimeter minimum past the end of the root canal to clear debris out of there, you will always have this at the end of your procedure. Okay. The way you know that I'm right is when your case doesn't work, you cut off the end of the root, you cut off the end of the root because when you cut off the end of the root, you eliminate this stuff, you put a retro seal in there, everything works because this is, has been removed surgically. Why not just take that out during the procedure? And the problem with it in here is not that it's such a terrible pathogen, it's that debris in a root canal has a very limited supply, uh, uh, ability of antibiotics and immune cells to get in here and kill bacteria, digest tissue. Um, what we want is if we push this out the end of the root canal, we're going to have a whole hemisphere of reaction that can deal with it like this. Antibiotics can get in there, immune cells can get in there, insects can get in there. So I don't want it in the canal. I would rather push it out the end of the root canal. If I'm careful, I'm going to move most of this back into the root canal and it's going to be removed during the irrigation process. If I'm unwilling to get a millimeter patent, I will never have control of the case, nor will the end of my root canals ever be clean. The analogy I use is uh, sweeping dirt or dust out of the corner of a room. Very difficult. If it's next to a door, you open the door and you do this and it's gone. That's what we're doing here is we're taking the trash out the curb, so to speak.